Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything. As long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus. And this time we'll look at the title, Queen of Heaven, to see what it means and how Mary fits this title. As with many things about Mary, it's important to understand certain things about her son, Jesus, first. First, is Jesus a king? Pilate, therefore, went into the hall again and called Jesus and said to him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or have others told it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? I own nation, and the chief priests have delivered thee up to me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would certainly strive, but I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from hence. John eighteen thirty three to 36 Right here we find Jesus saying that he is a king, and that he has servants in his kingdom who are willing to fight for him. But his kingdom is not of this world. This means that Jesus is the king of heaven, and he obtains this kingship from God. However, there is another kingship that he has a right to, another kingship which, like his own, came from God. He sent therefore and brought him now. He was ruddy and beautiful to behold, and of a comely face. And the Lord said, Arise, and anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward, and Samuel rose up and went to Ramatha. 1 Samuel sixteen twelve to 13 For a child is born to us, and a son is given to us, and the government is upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, God the Mighty, the Father of the world to come, the Prince of Peace. His empire shall be multiplied, and there shall be no end of peace. He shall sit upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to establish it, strengthen it with judgment and with justice. From henceforth and forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Isaiah 9, 6-7 And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! Matthew 21, 9 Jesus is carrying on the kingship of his ancestor, David. He carries it to fulfillment by rising immortal from the dead, so that his kingship is one that never ends, as it says in the quote from Isaiah. So we know that Jesus' kingship is not only a heavenly kingship, but a Davidic kingship, because he comes from the line of David. On that note, there's one curious thing about the Davidic kingship. He met with the brethren of Ocosius, king of Judah, and he said to them, who are you? And they answered, We are the brethren of Ocosius, and we are come down to salute the sons of the king and the sons of the queen. 2 Kings 10.13 The Davidic kingship had a queen. Who was this queen? Then Bethsabi came to King Solomon to speak to him for Adonias, and the king arose to meet her and bowed to her and sat down upon his throne, and a throne was set for the king's mother, and she sat on his right hand. 1 Kings 2.19 The king's mother has a throne of her own at his right hand. The woman that this verse calls Bethsabi is Bethsheba, in other translations the mother of Solomon. In short, the queen in the Davidic kingship was his mother, not his wife. There are a couple of reasons for this. Firstly, And to these was Solomon joined with the most ardent love. And he had seven hundred wives as queens, and three hundred concubines, and the woman turned away his heart. 1 Kings 11, 2b-3 In those days it was normal for kings to have many wives, and seven hundred thrones is clearly too many to fit into a normal throne room. The second reason is even more practical. Mothers were more dependable than wives due to being related by blood. The central challenge for any king, or any other person in a position of power, is to maintain his position of power and authority. This is challenging because there are always powerful people nearby who would prefer to be king rather than you. So if you're a king, you need someone who you can rely on for advice. Someone you can count on to be in your corner, so to speak. Now, with a wife, she might walk into the throne room someday when the king was a little older and a little wider and see some young, strapping general and say to herself, 
Hey, he looks like he could take the king in an arm wrestling match. Maybe if I give him some inside information, he can overthrow and kill the king, and I could be his wife instead. This did, in fact, happen many times to leaders throughout history. However, this sort of betrayal, typically, doesn't happen when the woman is your mother, not only because of her emotional attachment to you, but because she can't just become somebody else's mother, if you should happen to kick the bucket and be usurped as king. So, the queen in the Davidic kingship is the mother, not the wife, of the king. And the mother, not the wife, of Jesus, is Mary. Therefore, just as he is the king of heaven, she is the queen of heaven. Next time, does anyone hate Mary more than any other creature? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.